It's important to emphasise in psychology that there are two major categories of statistics. Firstly, we've got descriptive statistics that merely summarise, organise and, as the name implies, describe a set of data, e.g. measures of central tendency such as your mean, median and mode, or measures of spread such as range, variance or standard deviation. Importantly, based on descriptive statistics alone, we cannot determine the significance of a set of results. We need the second category, inferential statistics, which determine the probability that a difference between the control and experimental group is due to chance, thus enabling us to make an inference on the significance of the results. In VCE psychology, the inferential stat we use is the p-value, p standing for probability. And in VCE psychology, we set the level of significance at 0.05, which acts as a confidence interval. Importantly though, in university psychology, you'll learn that we can actually lower that confidence interval to 0 0.01, 0 0.001. But again, in VCE psychology, it's always set at 0.05. So to demonstrate an application of a calculated p-value, I'm gonna go through a hypothetical here. So I've got a research hypothesis here that states that clinically depressed young adults aged between 20 to 29 who spend six weeks on antidepressants will report a similar level of improvement in their mental health as adults on the fake or placebos for the same period. Now there's been a lot of literature that's actually debated the effectiveness or the validity of antidepressants. Many of these studies and researchers claim that it's the mere expectation of taking a pill that is mood enhancing that will actually result in an improved well-being rather than the drug itself. Our operationalized DV in this case um, is a change in score on a test out of 100 on a 20 question mental health questionnaire. Our operationalized IV is whether or not the participants were on the actual antidepressants or those fake placebos for that six week period. So using a matched pair design, matching pairs based on their level of well-being prior to the test, we've got 30 in both our control and experimental group. So this enables us to generate a set of scores on our pre and post test as well as our numerical and percentage improvement. But how do we know if this improvement or the difference in improvement between the two groups is a significant difference or not? Well that's where the p-value comes into play and importantly in VCE, we don't need to learn or know how to calculate the p-value, but just for interest's sake, it's based on the level of difference, in this case improvement, between our two means, as well as the sample size and standard deviation. So again, in this hypothetical, let's say we come up with a James Bond figure, 007. We need to make the following statement or statements. There is a 7% chance that the difference between the results is due to chance factors. This is an insignificant result, thus we are not supporting our hypothesis in this case. So therefore we conclude that antidepressants are no more effective in improving the mental health of young adults aged 20 to 29 over a six week span. Okay, so that's how you deal with an insignificant result, but what about a significant result? Studies have actually shown that for people with severe symptoms of depression, i.e. suicidal thoughts, that antidepressants are in fact significantly more effective in improving their mental health than placebo. So with a new bunch of hypothetical numbers generated here, We've got our scores in terms of our numerical and percentage improvement, and we need to, again, generate a p-value to determine the significance of these results. So this time we have a calculated p-value of 0.02, and again, the scenario will give you this figure. You just have to interpret and provide a conclusion when asked. So we state that there is a 2% probability that the difference between the control and experimental group are due to chance factors. This is a significant result, which means we support our hypothesis. Thus, we conclude that in this case, antidepressants are effective 
more effective than placebo in improving the mental health of young adults aged between 20 to 29 over that six-week span.